Hello everyone, and welcome back to Reyes, where we find ourselves once again as a barren planet eager to allow new life to flourish on our surface. So let's go ahead and begin. Today we are actually going to be learning a little bit more about the humans, the greed that they can have, the way that they may actually get aggressive, and how we might be able to use the titans to calm them down. So the third era. You have awakened from your slumber. You find yourself dry and barren. You recall a time when humans walked on your surface and wielded the food and wealth you gave them to build villages and start important projects. Are we gonna bring them back? I would love to have some little humans settle. Oh, my Titans! Welcome back, Water Titan. Oh, the Swamp Titan! We haven't run into him yet. This is gonna be cool. You have been given control of the Swamp Giant to create swamps. Using the Swamp Giant and the Ocean Giant to create a swamp of at least 13 patches. All right, well, I'll do my best. Let's go ahead, summon the water. We need to have the water before the Swamp Giant can create puddles and flora to turn wet wasteland into for and forest into a swamp. So we're gonna let him go ahead and get quite content right over there. And then we're gonna move our water giant because I think he needs to make a larger swamp. Here we go, do you see this beauty? Wow. Swamps have become one of my favorite biomes and ecosystems to learn about as time has gone on because they really are some of the most diverse and important places on our planet. So let's see what we can do on this little planet. Excellent! Your swamp thrives with life. Your swamp giant has gained a new ability. Herbs! Yes! So the swamp giant's special ability that it has just unlocked are adding herbs. The swamp giant makes a plant rise from the ground. These plants give it tech. So let's add it over here, actually, to leave plenty of room for potential villagers to come in. And look at all the little swampy, like, uh, fog. <gasps> Peppermint! Plus seven tech for each mineral next to it. So if we had the rock giant with us and put down a mineral, then it would give us even more tech. Oh, our village! Well done. The humans have settled once again. The herbs you made are producing technology. Oh, and look at their little village center. I love that. I love it so much. The peppermints you placed, uh, let's see. Yeah, so we're gonna raise technology. The spirit of the villagers have allowed you to regain some of your strength. Your ocean giant has gained a new ability. The ocean giant has gained the growth ability. Aspect abilities allow you to upgrade individual plants, animals, or minerals. Select the growth aspect. So that's what this is, the growth aspect. Uh, and it lets you upgrade a plant. So let's get another peppermint down in here. And we'll go ahead and upgrade this peppermint with the ocean giant. Let's get you over here. So upgrades a plant with the growth aspect, aids food and natura. And then let's see, potent growth aspect, 33% chance, I think is what that means. Interesting. Greater aspects, sublime aspects. The herd allows you to upgrade animals and the crystal aspects allows you to upgrade minerals with the crystal aspect. Oh, here's our peppermint. There we go! So our peppermint has just been given the lesser growth aspect, so it now offers up more food and tech, I believe. Or we could transmute it into tomatoes, which gain extra technology when the amount of food on their patch increases. You will notice the aspect appearing on the patch panel in the upper right corner. As you can see, the growth aspect has added extra food to the patch of peppermints. I love how he's doing a little dance. Okay, so all giants have aspect abilities which can upgrade plants, animals, or minerals. So this guy would have the toxic aspect which would give the plants the toxic ability instead of the lesser growth ability. He also has the predator aspect which would no doubt turn the animals into predators instead of herd animals. And the reaction aspect which I think would make like chemicals uh, out of our minerals instead. But you sense there is more. An aspect that you place has transmuted the herbs. Click on the patch of herbs and now we shall transmute them into tomatoes! 
Well done! Aspects can be used to transmute animals and plants into more powerful variants. And from here, the tomatoes could even end up becoming white willow, which you can create a mangrove of natura and tech with other plants with. So cool! Uh, also, you can add another aspect to it. Interesting. Hmm. And symbiosis plus five tech for each one food on the patch. So it's actually producing a lot of tech because it also is producing food. Nice. Good job, tomatoes. Don't forget to, these tomatoes have a new symbiosis. By using the transmutation, transmutations and symbioses, you can create complete projects with ease. There. But we need a project, you guys. Oh, there's their school. Is that a school? It's a school project. That is so cute. So what do they want for their school project? They want to have 15 technology in use and they want to have 10 food in use. So let's work on getting them more food. And the only way we can really do that right now is with tomatoes. So because the peppermint give us tech, but not food. However, we'll wiggle over here. And we will work on the project. And we are going to complete the school project. So now these guys are trying to produce more food. Um, or no, 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 they're about to. So right now the peppermint are giving us two food since we gave it the lesser growth aspect. But we're going to go ahead and transform them into more tomatoes. And now these guys in just two patches of tomatoes and a shake of peppermint can get up to 24 food, which is wonderful. We want to have 15 food in use and we actually need to complete the school project in the next like 13 minutes or else the project will fall apart. Outdoor classes plus two food and two tech for each tomato within the borders of. Oh, that's so cool. So we're currently getting four food and four tech. But if we come over here and we upgrade that peppermint again, and let's actually plant another peppermint too. So if I upgrade this peppermint, watch what happens from the school specialization. It's going to go up to more food. Ta-da! Two more food and tech because apparently we have a lot of tomatoes in this swamp. And oh, there it goes. Congratulations, guys. And we got an ambassador. Yay! New abilities can be unlocked by picking up the ambassadors. Hover over your locked abilities to view their unlock requirements. So uh, pick up the ambassador by clicking. On, okay, so we, who do we want to upgrade? Unlocks with a swamp, a swamp ambassador the herd aspect. Unlocks with the swamp ambassador the toxic aspect. I want to see what the animals can do. So let's grab this guy. So now the ambassador is so pleased that he shall join his spirit with our water titan and hopefully we'll have something special we can do. Well done. Completing projects will reward you with ambassadors who in return will upgrade your giants. You have now learned about prosperity. Yay! Prosperity is the total amount of food in use, wealth in use, and technology in use for all planets or for all villages on the planet summed together. So let's see, upper left corner. So we have 49 prosperity right now. Villages also have village prosperity or the amount of prosperity for every village, which is 51 for this one right now. In order, for, in order for a new village to settle, you must fill the prosperity bar, which is this right here. So for the next nomad, we need to have seven more prosperity. Uh, okay, you sense a rumble beneath your surface. Oh, here we go, you guys. It's the forest! There we go. Our forest giant has joined us. Uh, raise the prosperity. Use all your giants to raise the prosperity above 60. Pay close attention to the, the prosperity bar in the upper left corner and make good use of project specializations, aka add a ton more um, tomatoes. <laughs> and we should be able to do this. Also, what can this guy do? So he can add leaf aspect. Let's get him to put down a patch of plants in the, the swamp and see what happens. Let's actually come over, let's see, like here and get a patch, another ocean going so we can spread the forest. Oh, we did it! Well done! A nomad is about to spawn. In order to settle, the new nomad will also require a habitable area with some animals, plants, or mines nearby. So basically, we have enough prosperity for a new nomad to appear on our planet 
but he can't really show up yet because there's nowhere for him to live. This place is already settled uh, and the borders, like there's only like one little patch that the borders haven't taken up. Also, we put down elderberry. That's so cool. And if we have it next to an animal nest, it would give us like seven plus food and three natura. That is so fun. You can make it, you can make the elderberry into tomatoes as well. Or you can use the lesser fruit aspect to make pineapples and they do well near minerals. But I think we, we could just make more tomatoes. <laughs> but if we can wait and get animals here, that might be good. All right, let's actually get the forest over here. I think that's gonna make my, my guys start fighting, but we'll have to see what happens. Because they'd be right next to each other and competing for resources. All right, so forest giant, we'll have you spread there. Create stoats. The swamp giant has unlocked the exotic animal ability. Use the exotic animal ability in with the swamp giant in the forest to create animals. <gasps> You guys, that's so cool. So we can have exotic animals that provide wealth. Let's come and add the stoats over here, I think, like right on the edge. Ah, and that's not gonna be close enough for an animal nest, unfortunately. And we might be able to actually upgrade that. So I'm gonna move you there. Let's get the forest giant over here for a second. I wanna spread some forest. Stoats? Stoats! We have stoats now, you guys! Well done! You have created stoats. You sense a nomad roaming the surface. Yeah? Oh, there he is! Oh, boy! What's gonna happen? Can I upgrade the stoats? Where are my stoats? Royal fur. Plus two wealth if there's a mineral within the animal range. Which there is not at the moment. <gasps> we have a forest village! Well done. A new village has spawned. Villages always spawn near habitable areas with plants or animals or minerals placed nearby. Awesome. The stoats have created symbiosis. Uh, let's see. So if there's a mineral nearby, but we don't have any minerals. Oh, wait a second. Just in time. There is our friend, the rock giant. And now we want to create a... Um, symbiosis basically so let's add the mineral right here and you should see the stoat gain more wealth now there we go holy cow the agate has symbiosis plus 10 wealth if next to an animal nest holy cow so we just got like a ton more wealth just from those two things having a symbiosis in their little ecosystem together Stoats and agate work well together thanks to their symbioses. Do you remember the blueberries that worked with chickens? Blueberries also have a symbiosis which works well with other plants. Use the fruit plant ability of the forest giant to create some blueberries in the forest. Okay, let's add the blueberries over here. And then I think we're gonna want the chickens, but I can't use that ability just yet. Look at the little stoats go. I'm really worried though, because these two villages are very close to each other. And I don't think they're gonna be super happy about that. I'm gonna be honest. And what was the tomatoes? The tomatoes plus five tech. Hmm. Oh, yay, we have blueberries. Select the blueberry and check the symbiosis and transmutation tabs. So blueberries give you plus 10 food if next to an apple tree, dandelion, or strawberry. <gasps> we can easily make that. Blueberries can transmute into strawberries with a leaf aspect. Use your forest abilities or your forest giant's leaf ability on the blueberries. So then we can transmute these into strawberries. Are you guys ready for this? Ta-da! Those can even turn into pears. Holy cow. Look at that. Uh, placing blueberries next to strawberries will create symbiosis for both the blueberries and the strawberries as they lean upon each other in their ecosystem. So now we add blueberries. <gasps> Look at how much food these guys are getting now. What? Because they have the grove symbiosis being next to strawberries. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and now we have a little project. So what do we have that they want us to do in this shrine? They want to have 15 food and wealth in use. Greed Express plus five tech for each food within the borders is the specialization of the forest shrine. So they're actually, 
Um, they kind of have 117 well or like technology coming on in here. That's amazing. Uh, they're basically much more technologically advanced, if not having as much food. And they definitely have more wealth than the swamp uh, tribe. So now we're kind of competing between the swamp tribe and the forest tribe. I am a little concerned that they're talking about, oh my gosh, they're talking about trebuchets and targets. So we may have just created a sense of inequality and greed in between the two villages. We'll have to see what we are going to do about that because uh, I'm really quite fretful that we're about to have a bit of a problem on our hands but we will have to carry on next time. So if you guys could, do please leave a like to help us grow our fantastic swamps and our wonderful blueberry patches. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing, and I will see you guys for war next time. Bye, guys.